new videos every day. The sexy French maid. First of all, a couple of questions about them. Why do they wear those uniforms, those little skirts with the frill and the hand duster and the little hats? Why do they wear those uniforms? Second of all, why French maid? What, do they come from France? Do they speak French? Why isn't there a sexy Norwegian maid or a sexy German maid at that? Third of all, how did an occupation like a maid, someone who cleans up after someone else, how did that become sexy? I will answer all of these questions today. I'm a college girl and I study anthropology, sociology, and the evolution of the pop culture icons. Today we are going to discuss the evolution of the pop culture icon of the sexy French maid. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the word maid itself. It's shortened from the word maiden, coming from an old German word maged, meaning a youngster, an unmarried woman, or basically a virgin, which is a little ironic, I think. So we see the word maid and mermaid, serving maid, milkmaid. Basically, maid means a young girl. So if we go back 500, 600 years ago, we have all these maidens, young girls, unemployed maidens at the time. What kind of job could a maiden get? They could be a nanny taking after somebody's kids, milking a cow, cleaning up a house. These maidens at the time were maiden servants, young girl servants. I have a maiden servant is what they would say. Then it got shortened basically to I have a maiden and eventually I have a maid. The practice of having a maid servant goes back thousands of years. We can date this back to the Greek and Roman era. But the concept that we know of the French maid began in the early 1800s in Great Britain. Now in Great Britain, they took their maiden servants very seriously. They would have them follow them around in the streets and, and care to their every need. It was an, a symbol of their social status to have a very appealing maiden servant follow them around and do their bidding for them. So it was very important that they were very well groomed and looked nice. And what most people don't know is that maids had a lot of different uniforms. In the morning, they would be serving tea to their guests. They would be wearing one outfit, and then they would change completely and go clean, clean the stables or clean up after somebody else. And then in the evening time, they would be having a dinner party or something, and they would have something a little more attractive and a little more appealing. So when you think about it, back in the 1800s, two women would come in for the same job, the same maiden position. Now, usually, the more attractive one would get the position because they take them out with them in public and they want someone who's presentable. Now back to France for a second. France is associated with exotic women, the city of love, Paris. So they would take these French ladies back to England with them to be their French maid. It was much, much more in vogue to have a French maid than to have a regular serving woman. So. These French maids were real in England, but they probably didn't have the skimpy lingerie with their panties hanging out. So where did that come from? Now, one other thing I'd like to talk about is the idea of the French postcard. Now, these postcards were postcards you could go and buy and write a letter on the back and send it to somebody, but guess what was on the cover? A half-naked or completely naked French woman. Now this was a completely new idea, not just in France, but in the entire world. There was no way that you were going to see a naked woman. So nowadays, pornography is everywhere. You see it on the internet, we've got Playboy magazine. If you turn on the television, there's a good chance that you're going to see some kind of nakedness on the television. But back then in the early 1800s, there was nothing like that around. This, with the French postcard, was a completely new idea, and it was kind of risque of the French to do this. It was almost as if they were starting the industry of modern pornography with their French postcards. So the word French in front of the word postcard sort of became an adjective compared with the word sexy. 
a sexy woman, a sexy postcard. So the French maid was associated with this sexiness that came from the French postcards. Now, with all pop culture icons, it usually starts with some kind of entertainment that popularizes this icon and makes it a real thing. And the French maid is no exception. Dating back to the 16th century in Italy, with the Commedia dell'arte, literally translated to the comedy of artists, was a type of theater where certain characters would be reoccurring stock characters in the plays. Now, one type of character is called the pantalone, and he was usually the old miserly type with red pants and a long beard. He usually had a lot of money, and he also had a maid. Now, this character is the sexy, kind of conniving, tricky maid that audiences just loved. She became so popular that this kind of character became a stock character herself. So that's kind of where the sexy French maid started to become popular. With was with this Commedia dell'arte, dating back to the 16th century in Italy. So in the 1600s in Italy, the idea of a maid was already becoming a little popular as being sexy. Like I said before, in the 1800s, back in England, the French maid was gaining popularity with the French postcards. In addition to this, Basil Hood, a famous playwright in England, wrote a play called *The French Maid*. In this play, the main character, the sexy maid, her name was Suzette, and in the play, she's flirtatious and stringing along and teasing a number of men throughout the two acts of the play. She was very sexy, and this play popularized the idea of the sexy French maid even more. So, with the Commedia dell'arte in the 16th century in Italy to the 18th century in Great Britain, with the French maid, the play, and these French postcards, the idea of the sexy French maid became a stock character. We started to see her more in burlesque shows and vaudeville, and even down to the idea for the outfit of many popular strippers. This sexy French maid was seen so often in so many different forms of media and entertainment that she became a popular sexual icon. So that is how the sexy French maid became a popular cultural icon. Now, in future videos, we're going to go in depth into cheerleaders. How did cheerleaders become sexy? Why are they an icon, and where do they come from? Actually, believe it or not, cheerleaders used to not be sexy. Actually, the very first cheerleader was a man. And after that, another video on the sexy bunny girls. Where did that come from? I personally think it's a little strange to see a sexy girl dressed up as a bunny, but you and I both agree that that is sexy. Why is that sexy? Where did it come from? And to give you a little hint. Think about the Easter Bunny. We all know the Easter Bunny has been popular for years and years, and he was actually known as a fertility god before that. So, you may want to subscribe if you want to learn a little bit more about sexy bunny girls and cheerleaders. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to know the origin of something, the history of something, or maybe just some interesting facts about a subject, let me know. Throw it in the comments, and I'll be happy to do a video on it and see what we can do. So thanks for watching. Please rate my video, and we'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos, ranging from sexual health to psychology. To mind control. So, if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.